Hey guys, what's crack? And we are back today with another episode of the CSL. I am Kraken Nation, coach of the Boston Bishops, and today we are going to be looking at our team builder for our battle against the BC Bastions. The BC Bastions are definitely a threatening team. Um, they do reside in the other conference. I believe they are in the Emerald Division. But regardless, we're going to be uh, having a matchup against them. Uh, quick, quick history, quick recap. Um, we are currently getting beat. <laughs> Um, no, nah, we are, we had a tough, we're coming off a tough loss last week, um, to add the, it was a well-played game, I think, by both sides, honestly, I'm not too disappointed in myself, um, but in the end, uh, I did, he did clutch a crushing 5-0 defeat against us, um, fortunately, though, our friend, uh, Dubs at Penguin, coach of the Washington Weavile, was able to clutch a epic win against Alpha Jorez, coach of the Macargo Tel Aviv, um, who was right on my tail. So, that fortunately, actually, I managed to hang on to my um, spot as the conference leader for another week after suffering a 5-0 loss. So, I'm pretty happy with that, you know? I'm not complaining at all. So, regardless, um, we're just going to hop right into it. Uh, so, like, yeah, with the, I mean, we are just going to hop right into it, but, like, with that in mind, like, I have to do really well in upcoming weeks, so I, I'm taking these battles wicked seriously, and I don't know how I'm going to come around to beat Abdo next week, um, or sorry, in the playoffs, because I, I think I'm basically guaranteed to make playoffs right now, I'm not a positive, but I think, actually no, I'm not guaranteed, but I, I, I'm not guaranteed, that's not even true, but I think that like I have to play my best, I really want to keep that conference buy spot at all costs, Whew, regardless, um, so let's hop right into it. This is a uh, obese one, Kenobi, the Snorlax. We're gonna bring a salt vest with immunity. Immunity gives us a, use a useful immunity to toxic spikes. I'm trying to minimize the amount of effect that toxic spike will be able to play on my team, um, because he does have quillfish as well as a lot of Pokemon that could potentially be clicking toxic, such as Tangela, such as Latias, um, a lot of potentially defensive type Pokemon. Um, so I did want to run immunity over thick fat. Thick fat gave me not really any really significant uh, resistances that I didn't already have. Um, both Fire and Ice were already resisted by Mega Love Disc, so I really didn't need to bring uh, Thick Fat. Regardless, uh, this is a especially defensive half of my, most of the especially defensive half of my defensive core. Um, with the ability to hit a lot of this team very, very effectively, and also if it potentially does happen to get... Um, Burned or something because our two Pokemon, I think that can burn on his on the team. If we look at uh, the BC Bastions, um, actually, there aren't so maybe it's not, maybe I shouldn't run it. Uh, maybe I shouldn't run immunity. I'm running facade actually because there are no burners, so I mean, I, it's better to make that return for now. Um, regardless, we do hit a lot of the team really, really hard. Earthquake hits uh, things such as Jolteon. This is our main, our best answer, team's best answer to Jolteon. So, Earthquake hits that extremely hard. Heavy Slam hits things such as um. Oh my god, what was I saying? It hits things such as... Um... Ah, uh, my god, sorry. Togekiss, it hits very hard. Um, it also hits, uh... Cryogonal, but we have Fire Blast for that. Regardless, so Heavy Slam hits a lot, Earthquake hits a lot, so we're already cheating really good covered that. Return is just a really reliable neutral, uh, neutral stab against almost this entire team. I was really dancing between running Return or returning... returning uh, running Crunch, sorry. Um, but I'm honestly still kind of undecided because Crunch hits things like Dusknoir and Togekiss, a l sorry, Dusknoir and Latias a little bit harder. The return is a much safer move for the most part against everything um, in a lot of situations. So I'm really undecided about that. Um, but we're going to see. Uh, I am running the rest of the special defense and a little bit of special attack, which actually secures a 2-hit KO on Tangela with Fire Blast, which is pretty clutch. Um, Tangela is the only real switch in a bar Dusknoir that this team has for my... Um, Snorlax, I think I really have to make this crunch as I'm really afraid of that Dusknoir, honestly. Um, uh, that Tangela is the and Dusknoir are the only two good switches. So now, if, with this set, I would be able to hit both Dusknoir and t um, Tangela very, very hard. I think scoring two KOs, potentially a three KO on Dusknoir if it's a defensive variant. Um, although, if it does. See, this is the thing. If it has a, a Will O Wisp variant, I do kind of want to run facade, but I think I'm going to have to scout for that. Maybe switch in things such as Uxie. Um, regardless, we'll have to see. Uh, moving on from there, this yeah, this set's actually pretty sweet and forms a special defensive half of our core with a lot of special bulk. Um, we've got Alamomola, 
Um, Alamula is a physical wall, just really kind of doing its thing. Leftovers is pretty great because it allows us to really sponge hits from a lot of things in this team, um, namely Mega Gyarados. Uh, I didn't want to run Rocky Helmet because Mega Gyarados um, has a really tough time to it KOing us if we're behind rocks. Uh, sorry. Uh, even after rocks, if we're leftovers with protect, um, whereas Rocky Helmet actually with crunch, it can achieve a two at KO if it gets up to plus two. So that's a little scary. So I didn't want to really make sure that I can take things on that I needed to. Uh, 534 HP is obviously just nothing to mess around with. Wish passing into the rest of the team is always an option, namely Snorlax to keep the defensive core alive because it, she he brings something like Jolteon to take a bite of damage out of Alamola. That's a, and take click on a Thunderbolt. That's a free chance to switch an Obese Wan Kenobi on my wish. Uh, hopefully, and get a lot of HP back and scare that Jolteon back out or hit it really hard with a move that he's not expecting. Either way, um, we're going to be able to do a lot of damage to that thing. Um, so, Toxic is able to just stall out a lot of these uh, more defensive mons, such as Mega Gyarados, such oh, sorry, more offensive. So, Mega Gyarados, Darmanitan, Machamp, um, not Aggron, but I can hit Aggron decently hard with Scald anyways, um, as well as Dusknoir and even Tangela um, if it wants to try to stall me out. So, obviously, Mega Love Disc is basically this is a battle where Mega, Mega, Alamola, Mega Love Disc is able to function perfectly in his role with um, things such as Mega Gyarados and Darmanitan, Machamp, um, and Aggron, which is like perfectly walled. Um, as I honestly don't even know if uh, Darmanitan gets. Um, I honestly don't even know if Darmanitan gets. Anything to hit. I I feel like it doesn't get wild charge, but I'm honestly not sure. Um, yeah, it's literally nothing hit me unless you want some weird will o wisping variant, which honestly doesn't even scare Alamola too too much because it does have leftovers plus reliable recovery and regenerate, which I want to make sure I actually have. Yes, I do. Um, moving on, we have Pixie Plate Manatee, which is pretty heat, but Pixie Plate is able to secure a KO after rocks on assault vest variants of all at least not guaranteed, but do a lot of damage to assault vested variants of um. Machamp, so that Machamp isn't able to cut my sweep short if he wants to try to run a assault vest on it. Uh, Tail Glow Serve, Ice Beam, Dazzle Gleam hits this entire team super effectively, basically. B um, bar the thing, I mean, the, the things that doesn't hit super effectively, it hits really hard. That being things like Jolteon and Dusknoir, um, and also Cryogonal. Like, like honestly, these aren't can't take hits. And things that it doesn't hit super effectively, um, such as uh, Quillfish, which is the only thing you can't hit at least new. Like I think. Quillfish actually resists all three of our attacks, which is kind of unfortunate. I was having a really hard time picking Manaphy's coverage in this particular battle, but um, the things Quillfish is honestly not a threat to me between like all the th the three other Pokemon that I have on this team. Um, so like I'm not too too worried about it honestly. Um, so moving on from there, we've got uh, yeah Manaphy should be able to Pixie Plate secures that KO, it secures a lot of damage with Dazzling Gleam on especially a bulkier um, offensive monster that they have such as Meg Mega Gyarados and Assault Vest Machamp. Um, Uxie is a light clay variant with toxic stealth rocks to reflect light screen. This is just get my rocks up, which actually really helps um, Manaphy and Mega Metachamp secure KOs that they need to be able to secure. Um, toxic stealth rocks reflect light screen, so obviously I'm just running reflect and light screen to give my um, offense some, a chance to like, really come in for free and do some damage, hopefully. Um, and that's honestly been cl clutch in so many battles this season so far, so I'm really excited to be able to run it again. Um, and ultimately, Toxic is just to whittle down this team, as there aren't a whole lot of Pokemon that can come in on Toxic. Um, I think Aggron and Quillfish are the only ones, and Aggron and Quillfish are both Pokemon that Uxie can basically get screens up for free on, so I'm not too worried about them. Um, I am worried about hazard stacking with Pokemon like Quillfish and Aggron, two really reliable hazard setters. I am really, this is a battle where I'm going to bring a Defogger, so I am bringing a offensive um, Aerodactyl with Defog. Um, what I really like about this Aerodactyl set is that it's able to not lose me a whole lot of offensive momentum, which is honestly my biggest qualm with Defog in general. Is I really don't like running it when it loses. I feel like the turn I click Defog or Rapid Spin, it's a turn wasted. So I really hate to have to run those. Um, but this is a battle where I feel like it's really going to be important. Um, so Stone Edge, Earthquake, Crunch, Defog is going to help extend my longevity, longevity of my team as much as possible. Um, while also keeping a lot of offensive pressure on. Uh, Stone Edge, Earthquake, Crunch hits a lot of this team very, very hard. Togekiss is hit, Latias is hit, Darmanitan is hit, Machamp is not super hit, I guess, but Jolteon, I actually wanted to run max speed just to um, secure that speed tie with Jolteon. Um, I didn't really want to mess around with not having a speed tie as ultimately Jolteon is very scary for this team. Um, specifically, I don't want to, I want to take as much of it, any chance I get to KO the Jolteon, I want to be able to mac like, capitalize on, you know what I mean? Um, and also secure his Metacham with um, Shadow Ball, so I really want to be able to capitalize on that max speed, but also hits Aggron, hits Quillfish, hits Dusk Noir with Crunch, and hits Crack. It honestly just hits everything. 
Um, it doesn't I'm not running Aerial Ace because it actually does zero to Tangela, and Machamp is going to be able to take it and really do a lot of damage to us, or just click Bullet Punch or something. So I didn't really want to risk bringing it in, um, because on those two Pokemon, I have much better ways to deal with them, regardless, um, such as switching in the Vision, or honestly, um, something like Snorlax could honestly come in pretty easily. Um, moving on to our last Pokemon, we bring him back, Metacham, for another battle. Metacham has been sitting on the bench for far too long, but is ready to come out and play. Drain Punch, that Headbutt, Bullet Punch, Fake Out. I am running dual priority, as this will hopefully able, be able to achieve a lot of revenge kills on this team, because a lot of Pokemon on this team are hit perfectively, or at least neutrally, by both of these, and also very hard at that. These Pokemon include things such as Togekiss, Latias, Machamp, Jolteon, while it isn't hit super effectively by Bullet Punch, still takes a buttload of damage because it is not physically defensive. Aggron is hit pretty hard with Bullet Punch. It's, well, actually, not that hard. I should click, I mean, click High Jump Kick. But honestly, it just comes down to I have, like, and Cragnal as well, I have ways to kind of like deal damage to these people um, and revenge kill them, which is really going to be really valuable. I actually am expecting Dusk and because everybody kind of brings their. Um, uh, their ghost type when they see Metacham against me. So I've, I've, I have to play against a lot of ghost types, but I did want to bring Metacham because it does put in so much work against the rest of this team, um, as well as I am running 216 on both, um, or 216 on both Man Manaphy and Metacham to outspeed a banded Darmanitan, because I won't be outspeeding this guy regardless. Um, from there, Metacham is able to click Zen Headbutt, um, or Drain Punch on almost the entirety of this team. Um, Fake Up plus Bullet Punch takes over, takes care of most of the faster Pokemon than it, and then the things that are slower, Mega Gyarados taking care of. Uh, Darmanitan if it's not banded, pretty much bops if it's, uh, but like it has to be weakened probably first. But Alan Mola is such a good wall to Darmanitan, such a good like just counter that I'm really not too worried about it. Machamp um, again, Zen Headbutt will KO, and if I if I in a pinch, I feel like I can switch an Alan Mola. I always can. Um, Quillfish is really KO'd. It's a lot of, Metacham is really able to bust down a lot of the more def defensive Pokemon on this team, which is something I'm honestly really excited by. And again, Drain Punch is able to hit a lot of things and heal back, such as Aggron and Mega Gyarados, um, two generally higher HP Pokemon, uh, that I will be able to heal back from. Um, but I did all opt to run, uh, 40 defensive Vs rather than 40 HP Vs just to take some of the physical hits better, such as things from Machamp, uh, Bullet Punch from Machamp, um, or, uh, something from Darmanitan in some weird way, I don't even know. <sighs> but that should uh, be able to maximize Drain Punch's recovery while still giving me a little bit of bulk where it counts. Um, regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, wish me luck for next week's battle, or this week's battle, I should say. Should be pretty excited. Um, I'm really still debating whether or not to run Crunch or... I don't think Facade will come in handy, but Crunch or Return, one of those two moves will come in handy, I think. So I have to really decide what I want to do there. Um, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um... I'm pretty nervous, but we are still in number one spot for the conference, so we do still have that semifinals buy. If I can win every single battle for the rest of the season, I am guaranteed to have the semifinals buy. If I cannot win every single battle of the season, I probably will lose it to either Alpha Horus or Abda, as both of them are hot on my tail right now. Regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Wish me luck. Kraken Nation out. Um, I'm going to go into Quag here. It seems like he knows everything I'm going to do. But we do it. We are able to just do that. And